Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. I hope the sound is coming good and clear. Please invite your friends and let us enjoy some good time together for tonight or for today if you are living in Asia. Uh, I just actually uh, received a link uh, from uh, Dr. Zakir Naik. He posted an article. Uh, he posted an article in Facebook page, but looked like this article is from 2018. Hmm. But anyway, he posted this picture in uh, his Facebook and he posted the article. The article title is Who Wrote the Quran? Who Wrote the Quran and How Was It Put Together? Actually, this is a very good question and we would like to discuss it today together. But before we discuss it, we would like to see what Dr. Zakir Naik, uh, may Allah pray on him, uh, for him, not to him, uh, say about that. When a Muslim, he say, firstly, get ready for what's coming. Firstly, Allah guaranteed to preserve the Quran himself. Okay, so what is the proof that the Quran is preserved? Allah guaranteed to preserve the Quran. You know, <clears throat> who created the earth? Allah, he created the earth. Who said that? Allah said that. Okay. Who created the heaven? Allah created the heaven. Who said that? Allah said that. Okay. Um, hmm. If there is any proof, Allah guaranteed to preserve the Quran. The proofs we have, it says the opposite. That the Quran never preserved. And the Quran is just a collection of stories. And there is no proof of a single one verse of it. But let us see together how Allah he proved to us that he preserved the Quran. Read carefully. This is Zakir Naik. Now, we, can, we could not get Zakir Naik to debate us, sadly, because all of them, they want to debate me only face to face because they are so brave. Verily, we, it is we, who send down the dhikr, between two brackets, i.e. the Quran. And surely we, we guard it from corruption. I don't know, like Zakir Naik is an idiot as usual. A dhikr have nothing to do with the Quran. This is number one. Number two, let us say Allah, he said that. Is that a proof? I mean, the guy, his name is Muhammad. He told us that Allah told him this, but there's no proof that Muhammad even received anything from how we know that this verse itself is not made by Muhammad. No proof that he received anything from his God. If we go to the Quran and we see that Zakir Naik, he have no idea what he's talking about. al -Dhikr. If we type the word al -Dhikr, Remember, he said, the Muslim, they say to us when they read that word, they say, Al-Dhikr is uh, the Quran. All right? Chapter 15, verse number 9. Allah is God in it. All right. Uh, I am a prophet, and there's my God. He says to me that I send you a dhikr, and that dhikr is going to be protected by me. How Allah then did not protect the Injil and the Torah? Is it, this is a good question. You see, in order to trust somebody about, about what he promised, we have to go and check his history. If you apply for a job, the first thing they would do, even if you want to rent an apartment, the first thing they would do, they would check, check your history. The Muslim, they say that Allah, he sent 124,000 prophets. Each one of them, he have a message. And all of them, their books is corrupted. So 
So why and how this time Allah can be trustworthy and we can believe that the Quran is not going to be corrupt the same as the rest? Are you getting my point? The Muslims agree that Allah have a history of failure of 124,000 times. He could not protect his messages which he sent with 124,000 prophets. And now they want to convince us that Allah, this one, he will protect it. And then they say to us, the verse says, ad dhikr But that can't be true. Because here we go, this is the word ad dhikr Chapter 21, verse 105. And as you see, there is no way this is the, the, this is the Quran. You see? Before this, we wrote the psalm. After the message of Moses. So the dhikr cannot be the Quran. As you see, this verse confirmed that this has nothing to do with the Quran anyway. However, we will go with Muhammad claim that Allah said to him, his God, which I don't believe is exist, that he will protect the Quran. Let us do some little check together. First of all, Allah himself, he said in the Quran, he will cause you to forget the Quran. So how Allah, he says he will protect the Quran, and then he says he will cause you to forget the Quran. Are we listening, guys? Because if I say to you, I preserve the Quran, that means the Quran is preserved. Nothing will change in it. And then the verses is saying something very funny and stupid. You know, the Muslim, they say to you that Jesus said, uh, my father is a greater than I and then they say to you so how you say that the 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 God the father God the son God etc they are equal whatever you know how you say that he said greater than I and if his God is one how God can be greater than God that's what they say well you know Jesus simply he's speaking about himself in the flesh for he is in the flesh the father is a greater than I he is humbling. This is what the Bible says. For God, he humbled himself. So he come in an image of a human being. He humbled himself. So this is the Messiah is the humble image of the glorious God. But here we notice, if we go with the logic of the Muslims, that God cannot be greater than God. Well, how God is going to make Quran better than the Quran made by God? Because a greater can be about what? About many things. Quality quantity what is going on how God can be I mean what, what is greater you know so God the Father because he is in heaven he uh, you know he is doing more work than the Messiah right now in earth the message of the Messiah right now is just to take care of those people to teach them but Allah when he say I am going to make Quran better than the Quran. The better here present what? Anybody can tell me what the word better mean? Who want to help me? By the way, the video I just made a few hours ago, if you did not see it, you can find them in those guys, the good guys who download my videos and post them again. That's why I advise you to subscribe for them. And the reason I took it down, YouTube immediately, they uh, deleted all the comments. All your comments is gone in that video. All right? This is because they start complaining, you know? They, this is how much they are scared of us. So if you did not re uh, watch the video, uh, go to those channels who, you know, they always download my videos and you will find them there. So look here with me. Allah will make Quran better than the Quran. And Allah will cause us to forget the Quran. Now, Zakir Naik, he just said that Allah, he promised to preserve the Quran. Okay, how he promised to preserve something, he will cause us to forget it. You know what I mean? 
this verse alone is a big problem the Muslim they will say to you oh no the Quran is preserved in the tablet of Allah that is the most stupid answer ever because <clears throat> I mean if he said to him we are going to preserve the Quran we give you that's mean the Quran we give you it says in the verse we send you down the Quran and we will preserve it he's not talking about different Quran the Quran we sent to you is going to be preserved okay but here he's saying any Quran we cause to abrogate or cause to be forgotten so how we can put together I am going to preserve and I am going to make you forget do you understand me here Muhammad because he is a fool he keep forgetting Quran and he keep changing his mind and people start making fun of him they say this guy he says something in the morning he he enjoy his followers and order in the morning and he change it the second day at night same time Muhammad cannot remember to recite the Quran twice correctly this is why Muhammad he come with a genius idea Telling his followers who noticed that Muhammad he is reciting Quran differently from the time you know he he he, he did it before. As an example, Muhammad he recited the Quran. Today, tomorrow Muhammad he need to recite the same Quran. The second day Muhammad he cannot recite it. He start adding words is not there or forgetting words is not there that's why the verse saying cause to abrogate or to forget Muhammad he come with this story that he asked Allah to send him seven Quran read carefully with me Allah has commanded you, Jibreel, he came to Muhammad. Jibreel, the delivery guy, the angel supposedly, he came to Muhammad and he said to him, Allah has commanded you to recite the Quran to your people in one dialect. One dialect here means changing words. You know, you can add like instead of saying uh, uh, something, you say something else. So you can change words. Upon this, he said, who's, who he, Muhammad, he said, I ask from Allah burden and forgiveness. My people are not capable of doing it. What? Listen carefully, Muslims. The one who is saying this is not me. My people are not capable of doing it. Doing what? Reciting the Quran? Understanding the Quran? What? why in the world his people are not capable of doing it that is the most stupid answer ever because here that's mean uh, many things actually to us muhammad is correcting his god allah he is sending a command and the command is so clear allah commanded you you see it's not me who is saying the word command allah has commanded you to recite the Quran in one dialect. Muhammad now is telling Allah that your command is a stupid command. It doesn't work. You are dummy. You are stupid or what? Don't you know Allah that my people are not capable of doing it? So look how the fraud, just in order to cover his stupidity, that because he Quran, he created an excuse, and in this excuse he claim that he corrected his God, and he told him 
that this is not right. It doesn't work this way. My people are not capable. Here we need to ask ourselves, was Allah ignorant in this point? He do not know that this Quran, if it's on one dialect, is not good. Who told Muhammad about what will work and what will not work? You see, the Muslim they say that Muhammad is a prophet. Muhammad the prophet, he prophesied what Allah told him. Correct? Even the Quran confirmed that. Anything he say, he, it is an inspiration from Allah. The Quran says, وَمَا هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَى Anything I say, is not, you, you say Muhammad is nothing. But inspiration. Okay. So, Allah inspired Muhammad to say to him, to Allah, my people are not capable. It cannot be because Allah, he just commanded him to recite the Quran in one dialect. Right? So if the Quran was given to Muhammad to be preserved, and Allah, he is the one who say B is going to be as the Muslim they claim and they quote for us the Quran, says that the similarity between Isa and Adam is the same, uh, you know, uh, uh, same as Adam, he said to him B and he was. Okay, okay. Allah, he said to Muhammad, B, read the Quran in one dialect. How Muhammad the man, he can correct Allah the God and say to him, you are foolish, stupid, and it doesn't work this way. Here we notice that the story does not make sense. And then not only that, the story continue with the drama. The angel, he go back to Allah. And then the angel, he tell Allah what Muhammad said to him, that your prophet, you send me to him to order him to do it one time. He said, my people are not capable. So Allah, he sent him for a second time, Jibreel. And he agreed with Muhammad and he said to him, okay, <coughs> Allah has commanded you to recite the Quran to your people in two dialect. <laughs> you see, Allah agreed that he is a fool and Muhammad is right. Upon this, the holy prophet between the bracket, they made him holy, he's God. Said again, I seek burden and forgiveness from Allah. My people would not be able to do so. Uh -huh. Second time. So the story continues second time, third time, fourth time, fifth time, sixth time, until it became seven time. So Muhammad he corrected his God at least six time. In one, in six conversation. And the result of this conversation, Allah he ordered Muhammad to recite the Quran in seven dialect. Otherwise, my people are not capable. Here you notice the stupidity of the idea because the Muslim now they are reciting the Quran in one dialect actually. You know, the, 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 the popular one printed by the Saudi. Uh, so how Muslims today are able to capable of doing it in one dialect? Harf mean, let us say, okay, like, you know, they are saying here dialect, but it's not really too much accurate to say dialect. Like, you know, like in uh, simply, in some areas, they, they use different words and the words have different meaning, correct? Like, if you go to England, all of them, they speak English, yes, but some, some places, words mean something else. Uh, as an example, the word uh, 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 um, uh, 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 in Arabic means pimp. 
somebody he make his sister or his mom work for sex. In Libya, it means a wall. The same word. All right. Uh, uh, in Egypt, they have like if you say certain word, they can be very insulting. But in different countries, they are very normal. They are not insulting. Have nothing to do with insult. So what they are saying here that there, there is there is a Arabic languages. They use same words, but those words have different meaning. So Muhammad he is receiving Quran, the same Quran supposedly the same message, but in different words in wording, which means will make it a new Quran because as long as it's a new wording, it's going to be a new Quran. The second you change a few letters in it, it is just that's it. It's a it's a new writing. And here the funny thing is, how in the world people cannot, are, they are not capable, even though all of them they speak Arabic, yet somebody from Pakistan like Zakir Naik, he can understand the Quran. You know what I mean? If we need seven dialect in, me, in order to make the Quran capable of doing its job, because here when he say my people are not capable of doing it, The Muslims today hardly they can recite the Quran in one daily. Many of them they memorize it, but they cannot really, they don't understand what they are memorizing. And the majority, we can say maybe more than 90% of the Muslims, they don't know how to recite the Quran. And maybe uh, maybe 85% or something like that, they don't know Arabic at all. But this is will lead us to prove that Muhammad, because he was lying, he cannot memorize the Quran twice correctly. He have to explain why he cannot recite the same verse twice correctly. So he come with this idea that Allah He gave me each verse seven times to repeat it wrongly, which means different different way. So now, now we're, whatever Muslims they say to him, why this one is different from this one? You said to us yesterday. He said to them, this is a new Quran. Uh, well, yeah, the, the the one they are reciting right now is Quraysh, you know, and there is, I mean, all of them is stupid. I mean, what what the different? Uh, you see, even if there is different uh, words, like uh, a person who is from Egypt and now is reciting the Quran in the dialect of Quraysh. Okay, so what? How so? How how somebody how somebody not from Quraysh? You see, Quraysh is a small tribe tiny small tribe so how somebody he is from Egypt is capable now to recite the Quran in the language of Quraysh this is a proof that Muhammad is a fraud as simple as that how somebody from Pakistan who is not an Arab at all the same as the Egyptian they are not Arab he can recite the Quran there is some you know they go to uh, uh, like Islamic school they, they teach them very young age to repeat the Quran until they became a recording machine so how a kid who, who was not an Arab he can recite the Quran in one dialect if Muhammad he says my people which mean the Muslim at that time who they are the Arab are not capable and this is alone proof that Muhammad is a fraud because as you see a person from Pakistan he kept repeating the Quran like a machine he is capable and he is actually he would do better than Muhammad. Now somebody might say, "Well, Muhammad never forgot the Quran." And the reason he will say that because the Quran says, "Nuqruuka fala tansa." We are going to give you Quran. And you will never forget. It. Chapter 87, verse number 6. Do you see it? So the Quran made it clear that Allah will give Muhammad Quran and Muhammad will never forget that Quran. All right. So the Muslim, they say, see, Allah, he gave a promise and Allah, if he say be, is going to be. But then we find in the Hadith that Muhammad, yes, he forgot the Quran many times actually. 
If we go in the hadith, uh, let us see this one. This is Sahih. Allah Apostle heard a man reciting the Quran at night and said, May Allah bestow his mercy on him as he has reminded me of such and such verses and such and such surahs which I caused to forget. Do you see it? So here now we have document the documentation confirming that Muhammad himself, the founder of Islam, he forgot the Quran. Not only he forgot verses, he forgot surahs. Remember, he is saying that, not me. It says in the front of us that this person who Muhammad heard him reminded him of such and such verses. Not only that, and such and such surahs. Muhammad, he forgot surahs. How, how many we do not know? But here now we have a problem. And this is very authentic. As you see, this is Al-Bukhari. As long Muhammad, he forgot the Quran. And the Quran says that Allah, he gave you Quran and you will never forget it. That means this promise is a fraud. Correct? Are we getting the point? If God, he gave me a promise that I will not forget whatever it is. And then I forget. That's mean Allah. That's this is not my problem no more. That's mean Allah Himself, who's supposed to claim to be God, is not capable of protecting me from forgetting things. You know, Jesus said to the the, the man who cannot see, see, the guy he saw. The can the one who cannot walk, walk. He carry his bed and he walk. That's it. This is how God works. Be is going to be. You will live, you live. You will die, you die. So how Allah, he said to Muhammad, that you shall not forget, and then we find the hadith confirming that Muhammad, he forgot not only verses, he forgot whole chapters. And that would lead us to another problem. You see, this uh, this madness uh, religion is full of problems. No matter where you go, there is a problem. It doesn't matter what you do, there is a problem. Let us see. All right. <clears throat> we go back to the previous verse which we were reading, which is obviously amazingly stupid. In chapter 2, where the Quran is saying, none of our revelation that we abrogate and cause to be forgotten. Remember, why Allah want to abrogate verses when he is giving verses in the same time of Muhammad? Like It's not like uh, uh, a prophet, he came 500 years ago, and now the new messenger, he abrogate verses because they don't fit for today. No. The same messenger. The guy, he's, he's not even a, supposed to be a messenger for about 20 years. So why you need to abrogate? And I will give you some example of the stupidity of the Quran maker Muhammad. <clears throat> In chapter 2, verse number 178, it says, and this is for what? This is for the case of murder. I mean, murder is a murder. What will change? This is a justice for a murder. Should not change. 
why we will change it in the time of Muhammad so why we make a law and then we change it this is a law all Muslims agree that this law is abrogated it's gone okay why he why he changed it look at this oh who you believe the law of equality is prescribed to you in the case of murder free for the free slave for the slave women for the women <laughs> Muhammad, he is supposedly practicing the law of Moses. The law of Moses says eye for an eye, and this is Muhammad how we understand eye for an eye. You kill my wife, I kill your wife. <laughs> you kill my slave, I kill your slave. If you are a free, and you, you know, a free kill, if a free kill a slave, we kill the slave of the free. But what is this? This is the, this is the law of murder. So when he's when he come with this and people start complaining about how stupid and just this is, Muhammad he found that he was an like idiot, so he decided to abrogate, and that is the whole story. Otherwise, this is the law of God; nobody should throw it in the garbage. And if God cannot, when you say I abrogated this verse, are you saying to me it was not just? What is the reason? Ask any Muslim. What is the reason? To abrogate such a verse look god he made justice this is justice the only reason for us to abrogate if this is not just otherwise nothing change correct i mean this is not about how many prayer you pray or how many breastfeeding for adult you do like another example of stupidity we have endless of them <clears throat> when Allah he gave Muhammad an order to order Muslim women to do 10 time breastfeeding as you see this is not me Aisha saying the verses of stoning and the breastfeeding so we have verses for what breastfeeding for what for adult how many times ten times okay look at this the goat ate it but forget about the goat right now and this is will, will lead us to exposing the lie of Zachary Naik that the Quran is preserved I should say the goat is gone I mean the goat ate the Quran we cannot find right now the verses of stoning to death and the breastfeed for adult like one of the Muslim he was supposed to be so smart he said oh I can recite for you the verse of his stoning to death, it is uh, abrogated by writing, but not recitations. Thank you. Uh, abrogated by the goat, not by you. Because why you want to abrogate it in writing, but not in recitation? If you know what, what the verse is, put it there. Isn't it from Allah? Why is it not in the Quran? Can you recite for me, if you ask this idiot, can you recite for me the 10 time breastfeeding for adult verses? He will say no. So don't tell me then it's preserved. But here notice with me. Allah he ordered Muhammadan to do breastfeeding for adult 10 times. For those who do not know what breastfeeding is, you know, uh, if you want to go and visit a Muslim woman and you are not from her family, she have to give you her nipples 10 times in 10 different days until you are satisfied, which means you have to suckle her nipples regardless there is milk or not. This is because women, they are, you know, women are not a faucet. Their, their nipples not a faucet. They have milk all the time women and even animals they have milk when they have baby otherwise they don't have milk if, if maybe some people think like us men they think that women and their breasts they have always milk no they don't so when allah he ordered the muslims to do breastfeeding 10 time for adult what is the purpose of this garbage garbage stupidity but the stupidity go higher. Look what it says there. I don't know if you can see with me. The verses were abrogated in recitation, but but not ruling. <laughs> what is that? Where Allah He says to you, don't recite those verses. Show me. What do you mean abrogated recitation? What's wrong with you? You see the Quran preserved. Okay, as long the ruling is still there. So why you don't preserve 
the recitation, it's embarrassing, they took it off. And the stupidity does not stop here. Look at this. It's abrogated by five breastfeeding. So Allah, he changed the 10 time breastfeeding for adult and he make it five. And what a different now? <laughs> what a difference between 10 time breastfeeding and five time breastfeeding? Right? What is this? So I am God, I say to you, if you are a female, you have to give your boobs, excuse my language, to a strange man, he have to suckle it 10 times. Then after a few weeks, I say to you, don't do it 10 times, do it five. What, did I find myself silly, stupid, wrong? What is that? What is the difference between 10 times and five times? Hmm? What is that? And this is God? God, he ordered women. You know, we are very conservative. We order our wife to wear burqa, but she can give you her boobs. But in this hadith, we have many problems here. Not only this. We have a goat who is eating the Quran. And because of this goat, those verses are totally missing. And we have Quran confirming that Quran will be forgotten. And we have Quran confirming that even Quran will be given by the devil. I mean, have you ever heard of a prophet? He claimed that shaitan, he gave him uh, Quran. If we go, if you remember the satanic verses, Invite your friends, guys. Post and fix Facebook or wherever you know you have. Uh, we have a small number today. In chapter 22, verse number 52, the Muslims, if you remember, they do their best to defend this. They say, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, you know, Shaitan, he did not speak in the mouth of Muhammad. Open the interpretation, read it. He would die laughing. It says clearly that Muhammad, when he was reciting the Quran, Shaitan, he spoke in his mouth. Okay, no, I'm not drinking water, actually. I'm drinking tea. So never did we send a messenger before thee, but he framed a desire. When he framed a desire, Satan, he throws some vanity into his desire. Hmm. Okay, who is the, who is the uh, prophet before Muhammad who received Satanic verses? Name one for me. Name one for me. The story even says that Muhammad, when he recited the satanic verses, he did not even notice. And he bowed down to the idols, and the pagan, they were happy, satisfied with him when he bowed down to the idols. And then later, the angel Jibreel, he came to Muhammad and he told him what you did. Muhammad, he said to him, did what? He said to him, don't you know that this is not me who gave you the Quran? And that will bring us to a different level, exposing Islam. And you know, I'm not going to make a statement. I'm going to show you what the Islamic scholars' interpretation is. Because you know them. It doesn't matter what I say. They will say he's a liar. Anyone expose Islam, he's a liar. Anyone support Islam, he's good. This is the Muslim propaganda and agenda. They defend their God, Muhammad, no matter what you say. Or, read with me carefully this is not my interpretation again this is the official government website look like a uh, finally this website they changed the host and they are paying more money maybe so the website is functioning all the time which wonderful before we have to try many many times before we can have it open so chapter 22 verse number 52 and this is uh, the, uh, the, the big one of the biggest imam of islam at jalalain uh, this is the name of his book. We did not send before you a messenger or a rasul, which means a messenger, 
this is a prophet has been commanded to deliver the message okay and let us go down but when that when he recited the scripture satan cast into his recitation what is not from the quran to his what recitation do you see guys it says his recitation not cast recitation cast into his recitation do you see it let me zoom in so you can see it the muslims especially those little kids who try to defend they say no this is shaitan he spoke when he was speaking and uh, no it says cast into his recitation what he cast it let us read together you will see that muhammad not only receives satanic verses he saved those verses when the prophet during the assembly of men of Quraysh, after reciting the following verses from surat al-najm the najm mean the stars have you considered allat and al-uzza allat and al-uzza is the three daughters of allah and manat okay and the third one all right chapter 53 from 19 to 20 he added as a result of Satan cast into him into his tongue you see guys this does it say his tongue you see the, the Abdul they say no 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 not in his tongue no the Prophet did not say satanic verses no 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 Satan he spoke and people thought the Prophet he spoke do you see it says his tongue Do you see it? So what Satan he cast in his tongue? He cast satanic verses to worship and to ask the three daughters of Allah to intercede for the Muslims and for the Arab. And this is a clear proof that Muhammad is a fraud. How Allah, he allow even Satan to do such a thing. And look, by admitting that shaitan he was able to put satanic verses in the mouth of muhammad the muslim admitted that muhammad is not a trustworthy because how we knew that the verse which is in the front of us where allah is supposedly saying i will delete the satanic verses how we knew that this verse itself is not from satan you know what i mean to make it simple for you you have a waiter or a waitress who bring food in a restaurant before they bring the dish they spit in it hmm? and then you get the waiter busted he, you saw him doing that and now he promised you he will take it off how we knew he will not do it again <laughs> how we knew that this verse is not made by the same person who who put the satanic verses shaitan himself are you getting my point as long as Satan was able to put verses from himself once, that's mean he can do it every day. It's very easy. And how Allah He protect His Quran after, not before. Now Muhammad, anytime he can go to speak, Shaitan. That's mean it's possible, Shaitan. Anytime Muhammad is speak, he can cast in his mouth. And Allah, the only way for him to fix it is doing what? To send him a guy, his name is Jibreel, look at his door later, Muhammad, this verse is not from me. That's it. This, it says that clearly. Correct? And why Satan will not do it again and again? Give me a reason. Are you thinking with me? I hope people are taking notes. You see, this kind of thinking usually not everybody analyze and not everybody see what I see so what we are sharing with you is really uh, if you read it by yourself you will not notice what I'm talking about you will not get the same result that's why I advise you to take notes you see what we do here like investigating a crime and this crime is hard to investigate because all the evidence is written by the criminal himself. You know what I mean? Speaking good about himself. The criminal himself, he's trying to make himself not guilty. 
So that will make it additional hard because what is written from us in front of us is by those who worship this criminal and they will never speak bad about him. Remember that. Those are not the Arab who they are against Muhammad. Those are the ones who worship Muhammad and they are willing to chop your head for his sake. So if those who want to chop my head for his sake are saying this, so what the enemy will say? Do you understand me? They just admitted that yes, Muhammad, he did receive satanic verses and shaitan he spoke in the tongue of Muhammad. Now, if shaitan he spoke in the tongue of Muhammad, that means Muhammad in this moment, he is satanic prophet. Because if I speak the words of Satan, that make me Satan spoke man. Do we agree? The White House, they have a spokesman or a spokeswoman for Trump. What does that mean? You ask him a question, he will answer you based on what the uh, what is the president said. So here Muhammad became the spokesman of Shaitan. As simple as that. Shaitan, he did not use his tongue, he used the tongue of Muhammad. And as you see, you see it in the screen. So Muhammad now is the spokesman of Shaitan, confirmed, documented, registered, with fingerprint, translated, published, recorded, reported by the Muhammadan. How we can trust this person anymore? If you Muslims saying to us that our prophet, he was the spokesman of the devil. And here with this will take us back to the article of the funny Zakir Naik. Because Zakir Naik making an article saying that the Quran is preserved. Well, how the Quran can be preserved if the Quran itself saying that Shaitan he throw satanic verses in the Quran. That's mean this is a mission impossible. For there is no way to find out if this is a verse itself, this verse, which we will take off whatever shaitan he throw. Well, maybe shaitan he said that. How many verses shaitan he throw in the mouth of Muhammad during his lifetime? Do you know? Muhammad, in this case, he got busted. He was a hypocrite. Those Arab around him, he want him, he want them to accept him. He thought nobody will notice. So suddenly he start speaking about worshiping Allah and Al-Uzza. And he bowed down to them and all the, the Arab pagan, they, they bowed down with him. And now Muhammad, when the Muslim, they heard this, that he did that, they start questioning his dignity. So now to retrain his, 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 his spoiled honor, that he is already exposed and he is a false prophet, he said to them, oh, do you know what, what happened? Ah, I forgot to tell you, shaitan, shaitan, throw it in my mouth. Forget about Ramadan, my friend, for now. We have a topic. We, will talk, we have 30 days to talk about Ramadan. Don't worry. It's a stupid month, a month of nothing. Ramadan is not a, fast, a month of, month of fasting. Ramadan is a month of eating. This is why the price of food in Ramadan go crazy because Muslims eat more, way more in Ramadan. Go right now, search in Google, you will find that in Ramadan, all Muslims get fat, they have more heart attack, more heart problem because their, their, their food is extreme, uh, their eating is extreme, and uh, uh, you know, uh, that causes a lot of problems, health problems. So it's not a month of fasting, it's a month of eating. And this is explained why the food price go high. You see, if we are fasting, the price of gas now is very low. Why? Because simply we are fasting from using gas, people at home. Correct? Corona forced hundreds of millions to stay home. So now price of gas is very low. The lowest in maybe in the last 50 years. Why? Because people, they fast from buying gas there is too much gas in the in the market 
food should be the same if everybody is fasting why the price will go up All right so the price go up because people are buying more not less as simple as that too much food price go down anyway so here you notice and the one is mentioning to me the ultimate fault my friend we, we don't talk to kids that's it this guy is a kid it's an insult for me actually to Harry right who added dots the dots are added way after Muhammad to the Arabic language and that can be a different uh, category to talk about the Quran corruption too uh, because you know the corruption can happen as an example <coughs> any word in Arabic from what you see in front of you by adding a dot or taking a dot you can change the word meaning like totally different totally different uh, just to give you an example <clears throat> why do catholic priests maria more than jesus your question is very funny and not right secondly uh, catholic priests they don't pray to maria more than jesus not true the catholic priests they ask mary to pray for them not they pray for her go or read and uh, uh, see the what it's called rosary actually the rosary is coming most of it from the from the bible when the angels came to mary the angels they say to her peace into you mary blessed you are between the women so this is what the catholic they say and then they say pray for us we are the sinners so don't fabricate things i'm not a catholic but i don't like stupid questions all right the catholic they ask mary to pray for them they don't pray to mary we hear how many times we hear you know christian friends saying pray for this person we pray for this person so okay i ask you to pray for me doesn't mean i are god i ask you to pray for me so pray for us all right don't be a naive and repeat what people say i'm not a catholic and i don't want to be a catholic or a protestant or orthodox but don't be silly and repeat what people say anyway <clears throat> no there is no original manuscript for the quran nobody have it do you remember when the muslim they found one page one page in oxford university which was a was a donation actually from a christian priest the muslim they made a big a huge noise about it and the page the leather go back even before the date of Muhammad not the Quran itself which make it fishy because <clears throat> actually I wish the Quran itself uh, <coughs> I mean the ink uh, goes back to before Muhammad because that make it Muhammad is not the one who made the Quran you know what I mean if this is written before Muhammad exists can you ask the dead person to pray for them? You see, my friend, with my respect to you, first and last, before we speak about a topic, sh shouldn't we read? My my family, my, my Christian family, please, before you open your mouth, open your mouth when you know the Catholic belief and the Orthodox that Mary, she is alive, she was resurrected. So they are not asking Mary, the dead, to pray for them. And the Bible says, that when the Messiah resurrected from his tomb, all the saints resurrected with him. Correct? Many saints. So when you say, uh, you pray that the saints pray for you, the saints are alive. That's what the Bible says. So let us be smart and let us not to be copy paste. You know, I mean, all of this is copy paste. Many of us, we do the same as Muslims. Copy paste. Somebody is attacking the Catholic. I'm not a Catholic. But I don't like to lie about them in order to make a point. And sadly, many people, they do that. You know, in order to put the Catholic down, they lie about them. You know, there's many priests, they are working for the devil, whoever they are. If you are a Catholic or a Protestant or an Orthodox and you lie about other church to make yourself look better, obviously you are, you are Satan himself. Do we agree? Do we agree? Because if he, he's not decent, there's no way he is a priest. He do not know that the Catholic don't believe in this, right? 
same for the Catholic priest. If he is the one who put the Protestant down, lying about what they believe, that's mean he is working for the devil too. So let us stay away from the devil men. Catholic are great Christians. They love the Messiah. They worship the Messiah. They believe in the Trinity. They don't believe in Mary as God. So don't be a fool following the fool. We as a Christians, whoever believe, this is what the Messiah says, whoever believe in me and I will live. Not whoever is a Catholic or Protestant or Orthodox. Those names will not save you. No bishop, no name, no church name will save you. The one who will save you, his name is the Messiah, the Christ. Anyone else is a garbage. If I say to you, I will save you, it's mean I am I am lying to you. No man, no woman, no bishop, no pope, nobody. All, all men are sinners. How a sinner can save you? A sinner cannot save a sinner. So let us be smart and not let us not to be copy paste. Right? Don't do that. I love the Catholic. I love the Protestant. I love the Orthodox. I love whoever loved the Messiah who accept him as his savior. And actually even the Messiah says to us, love your enemy. So how about loving our brothers and sisters? Why cannot the Catholic and Orthodox Christian have a communion in Catholic Church? Yeah, because this is what I say, the priest, the priest, you know, there's many of them, they're like gang, like Muhammad. <laughs> this is why I'm saying to you, stay away from those. Stay away from such a mentality. They are the one who divide us. They are the one who allowed the Turkish to take the Constantinia. They divided the church over politics. The Muslims attack our holy land. They start taking our land churches, converting them into mosques. And those devil priests are dividing the Christians. And we lost the Constantinia. Do you understand me? Divide and conquer. Divide and conquer. Learn, learn. The whole point is how we can divide you and how we can conquer you. Uh, harm, 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 uh, uh, just to show you an, a great example of a stupidity. The Catholic is the only one who believe in the Trinity because they use the three fingers. My friend, I don't want to take your fingers and get out of here. I don't have time for kids talk. Guys, the, the Orthodox, they are the one who believe in the Trinity because they use three fingers. <laughs> what a stupid... Lord have mercy. Oh boy. Go, go, go. Follow Muhammad, you idiot. You are an idiot. What does this have to do with the prayer? using three fingers, five fingers? Are you stupid or what? So now the Catholic, they, they, believe, they believe in uh, uh, five gods? <laughs> Just get out. Yeah. Anyway, you see, you notice that there's many people, they are naive, idiots, stupid, and they involve themselves in something they have no knowledge of. This is what happened when you follow a fool. A fool will make you a fool. Never associate yourself with a foolish person because you will learn nothing from him except foolishness. Do we agree on that? Do we agree? You see, when you sit with somebody, he is very well educated and he is decent. What you will learn from him, two things, decency and education, as simple as that. If you associate, spend your time listening to someone, he is, uh, you know, promoting prostitution, drugs, what you will learn, the F word, kill him, shoot him, you know, because this is what you associate with. So you improve yourself by the association act. So when we as a believer, we associate together the quality of the believers we will have a quality of followers of Christ. Have nothing to do with being Catholic or Protestant or Orthodox. Those who divide us, they are antichrist. For Christ, ask yourself a question. Christ, do, do he like us to see divided? No, never. As simple as that. 
The second you work for the devil, you start dividing the Christians. And actually the Quran says in chapter 5, verse number 14, if you remember, that Allah will spread hatred and enmity between what? The Christian. You remember that? This is why Muhammad and they come here and they try to divide the Christian and they mention the word Catholic. I will not be surprised if the one who said the word Catholic first time in the chat, it was a Muslim. Because he knew there is many donkeys around and those donkeys, they love to kick. Just give them a word to kick and they will kick. <clears throat> they are donkeys, you know. They are certified donkeys. So we come there, we play the devil game. And we say the word Protestant or Catholic. And then they will start fighting because those are not following Jesus. Because if they are already following Jesus, they should not be fighting. They should be loving each other. For all of them, they worship God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. From those two who call themselves Christians, we did take a covenant, but they forgot a good part of the message that was sent to them. So we string them with enmity and hatred between one to another until the judgment day. What do you want more proof? That when you are dividing the Christians, you are working for a lot of devil. Do you want more? It's in the front of you. And by the way, one of the reasons the, the Muslims, they don't like me, uh, because I don't allow division between the Christians. They don't find a reason. I mean, how we can how we can get into this guy? You know what I mean? That make it really hard. It's like having a castle. It's a, it, it's a bulletproof. For the castle of Christ, for all of us who are here, who are united, it is bulletproof. No problem. So please, my friend, be a loving person. Be Christian. Christian is somebody. He love everyone in this earth, even the enemy. So what about loving those who love the Messiah, worship him, accept him as Lord, their savior? I can be a person. You disagree with me. As an example, you can say, OK, you cannot have an icon at home. OK, no problem. This is opinion. This is something debatable. You can say to me in the Old Testament, it says don't make images. That's true. But they can give you their own reasons too. And they can say to you, show you different verses in the Bible. It says, no, there's verses that says that synagogue were decorated, etc. So that's not a reason. That's not a reason to divide us. But when we came out of Christ, anything can divide us. If you remember once, uh, 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 a, a friend of mine, he asked me for help. And he had a fight with his wife. Things became getting so ugly between them. And look like they are hitting into divorce so he said can you please come i said well i will come only if your wife agree that i will be involved both of you have to ask me to come i will come his wife she called me too i went there and then i said okay so what the problem he said uh, you know look he leave he leave the coffee cup in the cafe table i told him not many times don't do it i mean can you believe it that there's two guys are hitting into divorce and things going crazy because somebody he left the cup the coffee cup in the table there's no way right when you lose love in your heart you find a reason to fight love is it's not there that's it when your husband when you are in love with the husband not only if he leave a cup of coffee in the table you are okay with it even if you spread the garbage all over you will say, honey, it's okay, no problem, I will clean it for you. But because love now is not there, for leaving a cup in the coffee table, you're upset. Forget about the Catholic now, first and last, please. Change it, change. I don't like anyone who will come here mention this topic. Catholic, Protestant, Orthodox, I will bounce you, I will ban you. Because simply, you are not bringing Christ to us, you are bringing division. As simple as that. Listen carefully. When love disappear, you find any reason to fight with the person who you don't love no more. And this is what you do when you call yourself Catholic or Protestant. You need to find love again. So you can love them and understand them and accept them. They are good people. So this woman now, her husband, who leave a cup of coffee, he became the devil. For what? I told them, this is not the problem. There's bigger problem. You are hiding from me. 
there's no way <laughs> you people are going to the, through this because he lit the co cup of the coffee in the table without going to more details when the love is missing everything else is missing do you understand now if i am teaching the muslims that islam is bad and i don't if i don't love them the whole purpose of my work is missing is gone because me as a christian i should be loving them to save them i'm not speaking against them i'm speaking against the cult so if you forget the love which is the fuel the purpose everything else is corrupt <laughs> So we love the Muslims, we want to save them, so we spend our time talking to them, explaining to them. Not the opposite. Same when we speak about Catholic and Protestant Orthodox. Ask yourself a very simple question, where is the love of Christ on me? How much decent I am? How much honest I am? What's the problem? The problem is love is disappearing and we became the same as Sunni Shia and, you know, madness. The devil, the devil is very powerful. Don't let the devil go between you and your brother in Christ. I never ask a person what a church he go to. I ask him what he believe. Who care what church he go to? What do you believe? The Messiah said, from their fruits, you shall know them. And look at you now you change our topic from speaking about the quran corruption you switch it upside down thank you very much this is exactly what the devil he want to forget hitting the head of the snake and be busy with something else Well, you better not to mention it no more, yeah, right? Anyway, so as you see here, we have many proof that the Quran cannot be preserved because the Quran confirmed to us that the Quran cannot be preserved. The Quran proved to us that the Quran is satanic. You see, we just showed you that the Quran says that Muhammad receives satanic verses, but isn't it this is satanic verses in front of us? If I spread the hatred between the Christians, let us say for the sake of argument, Christians are lost people. They are not following the true God. Okay. But spreading hate between them, is that going to fix the problem or that will make it worse? Who is going to get the benefit of spreading hate between the Christians? The devil, as simple as that. Do we understand? So every single verse in the Quran is a proof that the Quran is not from God. Additional to that, the Quran itself saying, Quran have satanic verses. Quran, Allah will make Quran better than the Quran. I mean, this is the most silly, stupid statement ever. How God can make better work of God? You know what I mean? If I am God, whatever I do is going to be perfect. How I can say I will do something better? That's mean what I did first was not good. That's mean God work is not the same. As, there's, there's God work is better than God work, but this is the same God supposedly. You see, better can be accepted if we have two gods and one of them saying to the other one, I will do better work than yours. If the same God saying, I will do better work, that means he's a human like me, he make mistakes. So I go to the exam and I do bad and I say, well, next time I will do better. But that's acceptable only for me because I am a human, I am not perfect. So I will never do perfect job and I hope next time I will do better. So how Allah will make Quran better than the Quran? Do you understand? And then things getting more ugly and more stupid when he say something better or similar. And that is really crazy. So I will make a cheese better than the cheese. And then I, or my, I might make to you the same cheese. So he calls me to forget the cheese. So he will make similar cheese. Have you ever heard of a stupidity like this? Do you see it? 
I make a cheese and I will make better cheese or similar cheese. So what is it? So why you cause me to forget the Quran if you will make similar Quran? And look at the stupidity. They say to him, okay, why you are making Quran like better Quran? What is that? He says, don't you know that Allah, to Allah belong the earth and the heaven? What does this have to do with the topic? Guys, what does this have to do with the topic? I am telling you, I will cause you to forget the Quran. And now you are saying to me, the second verse right away, you jump to different topic, have nothing to do. Don't you know that Allah, he made the earth and the heavens? What does this have to do with this? It's like going to a mechanic or somebody want to fix your tire. You have a flat tire. And he say to you, well, I will make your tire better than this tire. And then right away he says, don't you know that Allah is the one who made the sky? Like, what does this have to do with this? It's obvious that the one who made the Quran is suffering from flight of thoughts and he is teaching, teaching too much drugs, maybe. I mean, no way. There's, there's no way this person... And look, the verse after it, would you question your messengers as Musa was a question? Ah, they are questioning him. And this is why he have no answer. And who is the one questioning the stupidity of Muhammad? Read carefully the verse after explain. Uh, quite a number of people of the book wish they could turn you away from the... Here we go, the Christians and the Jews. The pain of Muhammad. They are asking him, you idiot, you make a verse in the morning, you change it afternoon. Actually, just to show you, I'm not making things up. What about we read the interpretation for this verse? Chapter 2, verse 106. Because Muslim, they might say, oh, he's making things up. You know, that's not true. You know them. They show it in the screen and still they say to you, you're lying. <clears throat> let us see read carefully with me guys this is not my interpretation when the disbelievers began to dride the matter of abrogation saying that one day Muhammad he enjoy his companion one thing and then the second day he forbid it do you see it what is the date between this verse and this verse? The verse abrogating and the verse which is abrogated. A date. Have you ever heard of a stupid God like this? In the morning he ordered you something and then second day he changed his mind he gave you something else. Do you see it? And remember, this is in their book. This is not in my book. You see, this is a book written by Muslims, published by Muslims, explained by Muslims, rented by Muslims. Can they say that we are making things up? And why God, he will send a verse in the morning and then the second day he changed his mind? Does it make any sense to you? But this guy is an idiot. He tries things. He make a verse. People don't like it. He is, you know, he, oh, oh, the people don't like it. They will know that he's not the prophet. Okay, uh, forget it. I abrogate it. Anyone he asks, are you Catholic? Are you Protestant? Are you Orthodox? I will give you both time, first time. You do it. Second time, we will ban you from our page. Remember, warning. Anyone he posts in the chat saying, asking, are you Catholic? Are you Protestant? Are you Orthodox? The admin will give you both time out, as long as it's first time as warning. Second time you say it, we will ban you. Promise, doesn't matter who you are. We have a topic here, and we don't care if you are a Catholic or a Protestant. Take your stupidity and go. Last time warning. So as you see, when the disbeliever began to bride, you know, about, about this matter, the abrogation, saying that one day Muhammad enjoying what he is doing, he enjoy. He enjoy what? He give them order to practice something. Second day, 
the second day, man. I mean, just wait at least a week. Wait a month. Second day. The guy, he go, he take a shower. He wake up in the morning. Oh, what shower? Muhammad, he shower with dead dogs, as you remember. In the morning, the second day, he forbid it. Not only he changed his mind, he forbid it. Right? For the one saying you misunderstood me. My friend, my friend, my friend, listen carefully. We have enemy, big enemy. And you people are busy with Catholic and Protestants. Stop being a stupid. We have people who they are insulting Jesus 24 hours, 7 days a week. We have people trying to convert your children to a cult. It's called Islam. And you are busy with your stupidity, asking questions, Catholic, Protestant, Orthodox. Stop being a fool. We have a big mission. If you don't like what we do here, leave. What's wrong with people? I don't I don't care if I'm a descendant. Why you want to say those words? You keep saying misunderstood me, misunderstood me, misunderstood me. Don't that's just said, just let it go. And don't do it again. Everybody here is welcome if you are coming here to learn. If you are just coming here to chat and uh, you know uh, like a kid, then go leave. In this place, the devil have no place between us. We will not give him a chair. Now look at this. If Allah is God, and Allah, he sent Muhammad verses. And remember, remember the Quran said, that it take the angel to come to Muhammad 1,000 year. It does say that, right? 1,000 year. Okay. So the Quran, in order to come to Muhammad, need 1,000 year to come. Read carefully. In chapter 32, verse number 5. He rules all the affairs from the heaven to the earth. And in the end, all the affairs go up to him on a day. The space wherefore will be a thousand year of your you know, count, like your, your count. So how long it take the angel to go back to Allah? Allah is in heaven, supposedly. He sent his angels to do the business in earth. Okay, Jibreel is the one who delivered the Quran to Muhammad. Jibreel, he delivered the Quran today. Based on this verse, in order for Jibreel to go back again to Muhammad, he have to take 1,000 years to go up, and then 1,000 years to come down, which means 2,000 years. So how Muhammad is receiving abrogation second day in the morning? You know what I mean? So if you want to go over all the stupid things in the Quran, it's going to take me for the coming maybe 10 years just to count how many stupid things we can, every verse, every verse, like verse after verse after verse, we will find ourselves like in an endless chain of stupidity. It's endless. It is what? Endless.
one of the hadith of Aisha she said that the chapter of Al-Ahzab used to be equal to the chapter of Al-Baqarah. Look how big this Al-Baqarah thing is. Al-Baqarah is 286 verses. 200 what? 286 as you see in the screen. If we check Al-Ahzab, how many it is? This is Al-Ahzab. Let us go to Al-Ahzab. Hold on. <clears throat> 73 verses. How many verses missing? From 286 to 73. More than 200 verses. 210 what? <laughs> 13? This is what Aisha she report that Al Ahzab used to be equal to the chapter of the cow. The chapter of the cow is the biggest chapter in the Quran. So, in one chapter in the Quran alone, according to Aisha, more than 200 verses missing. And actually, I wish they are not missing because that will give us opportunity to love more. The more verses there, the more we can love. Right? So when the Muslim they speak about preserved book, first of all, preserved or not your book is stupid and we prove that every day. The Quran is a book of science mistakes, history mistakes, names mistakes. Have you ever even a God who did not know how to, how, how to quote a name? This God cannot quote a name? My friend, first and last, a Muslim, he says to you that hallelujah coming from Allah. And why you want to take the Muslim explanation? Are you, uh, now we, is your priest a Muslim? Go on, search in Google, two seconds, you will find what hallelujah is coming from. A Muslim saying to me, you want to learn what, what the word in your Bible mean from a Muslim? Secondly, if it's mean what he is saying, how come it's not in his book? <laughs> go to Google type the word hallelujah what does that mean and you will see that this guy is a joker he's making fun of you so either you accept to be a person who people make fun of him if Abdul can fool you confuse you Abdul do you know what Abdul mean Abdul means somebody he believed that there's God who will give him in this private part he believed that there is Endless women who have no panties waiting for him, who believe that God will give him a drink, make him white. He believe in a flying carpet. He believe he believe in a talking ant. On ants, they are deaf and mute. He believe that there is a a, a captain general. His name is Al Hudhud. Uh, he believe that uh, uh, Suleiman he dies standing in a stick, and nobody notices that he's dead. I mean, should I count how many things to believe? This guy will teach you about what is written in your book. And you are asking, does it mean that? So why in the world I will take what my book saying from a Muhammadan? What happened? The Muslim even do not know. Okay, the, the guy who's saying hallelujah for you, ask him, do you know what Israel mean? He don't know. Jibreel, he don't know. Allah, he don't know. Mikhail, he don't know. They are thieves. All the religion of Islam is thieves. This is why they don't know what they mean. So when they fabricate things for you, don't you know, just go. I mean, you have... You, you. Anyway. No, if a Muhammadan, if a Muhammad can fool you, how fool are you? Because I never saw someone foolish more than Muhammad. Like when Muhammad, he gave a woman an order to do a 10 time breastfeeding. I mean, how foolish is that? What is this? Right? However, too young, if you are too young, 
my friend th that's not an excuse i was too young in your age and no muslim was able to fool me how too young you are if you are if you are in their age leave the page please how too young you are first and last how old are you here we use a language it might be not good for you if you are too young leave and too young is not an excuse today you are lucky actually you can open right now there's pages who explain the Bible Christian pages explain the Bible and you can learn the Bible from there but never ask a Muslim about what is this word mean if he says something to you never trust what he say because he is the last one to know he's, he's a follower of, of an illiterate prophet All right. 15. Okay, my friend. No problem. You see, okay, you are 15 years old. And almost time he says something to you, let us learn from today a new lesson. I will not learn what Christ teaching me from a Muslim. For a very simple reason. This person, he will not hesitate to spit on your book. Correct? This person, he reject your book. This person, he downgrade your Lord. This person, he believe you will go to hell. So how a person saying something who don't believe in anything I believe in, his words can match anything I have. When we say hallelujah and we are praising the Lord, simply, this is not an Arabic language. And Allah have nothing to do with hallelujah. Why his Allah his name is Yah, he like he ends with Yah or he starts with Yah. Yah is a word meaning God. If you go in the Quran, you will see chapter is called Yasin. Okay. Chapter Yasin. Chapter 36, verse number 1. Ya Sin. Sin is a moon god. Ya is a word meaning god. Are you there, my friend, the 15 years old? Ya Sin. What the name of the god of the Muhammadan? Sin. This is another name. You go right now and search in Google. Sin, the moon god. Type exactly. In Arabic, in English, now we say Sin. Where, where, where the word sin is coming from? You know, uh, because they used to worship pagan god, moon god, sun god, etc. So those who used to worship sin, the moon god, and then they repent and they became a Christian. So the second you do something wrong, they say to you, this is sin, pagan, it is sin, don't do it. So Yah is a word meaning God. Yahweh. It's not really a name. It's a word meaning God. You see, the language we speak today is a mix of languages. It's not a language really. Like, you know, one do uh, the Hebrew is born of Aramaic, Aramaic mixed with other languages, but it's one of the most ancient. And the Aramaic, uh, before there was the, 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 uh, the Phoenic language. So there's a language development. And Arabic is not even a language by itself. It took a lot of time to become a language. This is why there's many historians believe that the first Quran was not written in Arabic, was written in Aramaic language. Right? Like, if you go as an example, if we go in the Hadith, if you remember, Muhammad, he tried to commit suicide. It says here that when Muhammad first time he received supposedly uh, uh, the chapter of read, it's called Iqra, from his angel, the angel of Allah, 
his wife Khadija she took him to her cousin and then this cousin here it says if you read together then Khadija she accompanied him let us read then accompanied him to her cousin Waraq ibn Nawfal Ibn Asad Ibn Abdullah Ibn Uzza the person obviously he was a pagan and here it says that he was he became Nasara he is from the same family of Muhammad at the end Waraqa was the son of her paternal uncle i.e. her father brother who during the pre-Islamic period become Nasara not a Christian Nasara is a Christian cult or let us say cult but claim to be Christians like Jehovah's Witnesses and this person Waraka he used to write the Arabic writing and he used to write of the gospel in Arabic that is the Quran no the uh, uh, Adam he speak Aramaic well you know Aramaic you see it's an ancient language uh, but I believe before the Aramaic there was I mean development of other languages too so Aramaic even Aramaic is not one language I mean there's an ancient Aramaic and there's a newer Aramaic so Aramaic itself is coming from something before it and then it's you know develop and then uh, Hebrew itself copy a lot of things from the Aramaic or let's say uh, a, a transformation happen uh, and this is why you will use today a lot of words have nothing to do with your language like when you pray today you are in Indonesia you say Amin Amin is not a Hebrew it's not Arabic it's Aramaic as simple as that right uh, there's no moon God written in the Quran well, there's no moon God written in the Quran. He can say that as he wish, but you Muslims, you, you fast, you pray, you recite all by the Quran. Correct? By the by the moon. Secondly, in the same time, we just showed you a verse about the moon God. Yasin. Who is Yasin? You see, if you ask a Muslim scholar, look what the scholar they say. Yasin, Allah knows best what he meant by those letters. Question, why you do not know? The one who says to you there's no moon god well seen is the moon god go search it in google yeah is a word mean god so what muhammad the fool he is copying it from the book of waraka he do not know what those words mean he put them in his quran the second they ask him what does that mean he do not know because he's a thief you see if you ask me you say this explain to me what you said and i say to you allah knows best obviously i this is not my words he don't know what they mean. Do you understand? So there is no moon god in the Quran, and then we find Yasin. And then each one of them he give you different interpretation. If you switch the interpreter here, you will find a guy he says Yasin mean a human. Let me show you. Did I say that this is coming from the Aramaic? Did I say that to you? I just said that to you, right? Let me show you that. Even in their books, it says, and they admit. That this is coming from the Aramaic. Read carefully. We just changed the interpretation person. Does it say that here Yasin, according to their statement, which is silly, stupid, Yasin, he says, Yasin, a human being in the Syriac language. Does it say that? People, does it say that? This is their Muslim website, this is their scholar. This is not me. Okay, question. If the Quran saying, the Quran says, وَجَعَلْنَاهُ قُرْآنًا عَرَبِيًا And we made this book an Arabic book. So why this is a, a, a Syriac? <laughs> Correct? Do you see a stupidity? Isn't it in the Quran? It says, and we made this book a pure Arabic. Pure Arabic, not only, not only Arabic, pure how you say 
how you say this is a pure Arabic, and then we find that this is Aramaic. Read it. Chapter 39, verse number 28, and there's many other verses. So we made the Quran a pure Arabic. Change the translator, just to show you how the translation changed too. We take it a different idiot. All of them, they confirm that this is a pure Arabic book. Pure Arabic book. So how in the tafsir they say this is Aramaic? This is actually saying that is admitting that the Quran is a lie. Because if you say it's a pure Arabic and then you say this word is Aramaic, Syriac, well, nice to meet you. The lie is over. There is tons of words in the Quran are Aramaic. And the word Quran itself is Aramaic. Ask a Muslim, okay, if I want to learn what Jibreel mean, where I will find the meaning, what Jibreel mean? They don't know. Why? Because they stole those, those names from the Jews. Who is this guy, his name is Jibreel? Why he is called Jibreel? Can you explain to us? Actually, the name of Jibreel exposed that Islam is false. Anyone knows why? Anyone knows why? Jibreel, Mikael, Israel, uh, Israfil, uh, uh, Israel, Ish Ishmael, all of them expose Islam. Why? Because, look, this God who gave those names, Israel, he used the word Eel for God. You see eel? Eel. Okay, question. What happened to the eel? This person eel, who is he in Islam? How come none of the words of Islam now, the reason eel is exist because he copied the names exist in the Old Testament. As simple as that. How come Muslim never called their God eel? The foolish Muhammad, he stole the name. He do not know what Israel means. He think it's a name. It's a, it's a, this is... Israel is not a name actually, it's a, it's, a, it's a sentence, it's a statement. Mikael is not an it's not a name, it's a statement. Ishmael is not a name, it's a statement. Even Abraham, Avra, it's Abraham. Anyone knows what Abraham means? Abraham. Abraham is the one who crossed the river, crossed the other side. You ask a Muslim what Abraham mean? You don't know. You don't know what Ibrahim mean. <laughs> you don't know. The Bible is an amazing book. Why the Quran is a book written by an idiot, a thief. This is why he have no idea what they mean. This is why we see, they say Allah knows best what Allah he meant by this. I mean, what kind of religion they say to us Allah knows best? Just to give you an example about the Bible. <clears throat> I will play for you this video and I want you to listen carefully. There's another place. And I will put it for you on the screen. Give me a second. Just to show you that, you know, knowledge is way deeper than, you know, we, we have a book, is we have an amazing book. It's called the Bible. They have a garbage. They have nothing. They have potato, tomato. They try to make a miracle by saying, uh, we calculate, we plus 19, minus 17, plus etc. Et just to make a miracle because they have zero. They have nothing. For us, we have the Messiah, the miracle himself. He himself is a miracle. For them, because they have a prophet, he have a flat tire all the time. He could not make even a mosquito say hello. You will find that all the miracle Muslim claim that Muhammad he have is exist in the Hadith, but they are not in the Quran, which prove that they are lie. Because if it's a miracle is exist and Muhammad did, it should be in the Quran. 
Otherwise, why Allah, he mentioned the miracle of Isa, but he don't mention the miracle of Muhammad in the Quran. <laughs> Actually, the Quran confirmed that Muhammad have zero miracle, and we will show you the verses. Look at this. This is a video made by a brother, teacher, speaking about the gospel in the book of Genesis, which means a message for us as a Christians, people who follow the Old Testament and the New Testament in the book of Genesis. Listen carefully. That God appears to have laid out his plan in advance, and that's in some subtleties, and one of which I'd like to share with you in Genesis chapter 5, a genealogy. The genealogy in Genesis chapter 5 goes from Adam, the first man, down through Noah. And in Genesis chapter 5, if you wade through that, I encourage you to make a list of the names. Adam gives, uh, gave birth to Seth. Seth, Enosh. Enosh, Kenan. Kenan, Mahalal. Mahalal, Jared. Jared, Enoch. Enoch, Methuselah. Methuselah, Lamech. And Lamech was the father of Noah. Let's take these names. Ten names. Guys, look at this. He just told us what the Bible recite. The Bible recite names. This person, he begot this person, this person begot this person, this person begot this person. So when we read the Bible, all what we see is names. But the fact, none of those are names. Yes, they are given as names, but the fact, it is a sentence. None of them is a name. Listen carefully what he will say next. Names. But see, the problem is we need to know what the names mean. And if you have a study Bible or a source, a, a, a lexicon, what have you, you know that the name Adam means man. As you go through your Bible, when these names are typically first introduced, most of your marginal footnotes will tell you what the name means. Adam means man. Seth means appointed. Enosh means mortal. Kenan means sorrow. Mahalel means the blessed God. Jared means shall come down. Enoch means teaching. Methuselah means his death shall bring. Lamech means the despairing. And the word Noah means rest or comfort. Now, let's read that genealogy as a sentence. Man is appointed mortal sorrow. The blessed God shall come down teaching that his death shall bring the despairing comfort. Hmm. Isn't that wild? You believe it? There's another place. You believe it? And this is what happened to the Eid Muhammad. He stole the names, but by stealing the names, he got himself busted. You know what I mean? When he stole the names, he got himself busted. He didn't know what they mean. As an example, like if you remember, uh, uh, Ahmad did that once he was debating a Christian preacher who did not know anything about Islam. And he was saying to him, oh, in your Bible, Israel, Jacob, he was wrestling with God. Ha, 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 ha. But because the priest he did not know anything about Islam, he didn't know even that the word Israel is in the Quran. The question is, if you are making fun of the word Israel, so why it's in the Quran? Because Israel is a name given by God to Jacob for a reason. <laughs> There's a story behind it. So why you reject the story, you accept the name, you idiot? Because the name confirmed the story. Do you see the stupidity? So did that because he was debating those who have no idea what the stupid Muhammad said. So they have no idea what to say back. Muslims are very well trained to attack Christianity. You have no idea what they believe, so it was one direction attack. Can the dad debate me? I will make him shish kebab. I will crush him between my fingers. This is why all of them, they want to debate Christian prince face to face. It's excuse not to do it. All of them, no exception. And here we are preparing you, my family in Christ, to learn so no one can fool you. And I hope and I pray that the Lord will bring more better than me who can 
educate the Christians in the future because and you know it doesn't matter how much you live you will you know time will come and you will go and I am thankful that today we have the internet we have YouTube my videos will stay for a long time people they can join the same lesson you know get the answers even after I go to my Lord but still we need people who they are educated to teach their children and then the knowledge is spread and then the knowledge will never die right they are strong when you are weak they are smart when you are a fool they claim education when you have no education the second they notice that your education is exist they run away from you they will not even get close to you they choose their victim carefully and I say victim you see a Muslim when he want to debate a person there's one of two ways to make such a debate happen either I choose somebody is very polite so I can do mockery of him or I choose somebody who do not know much about Islam or in the best scenario I debate him without giving answers like Shabir Ali Shabir Ali he never answer anything we speak for 15 minutes make presentation at the end he said nothing if you remember when our brother David Wood he debated with this uh, person Joker Mimi Hijab David Wood was very polite very nice very gentleman very respectful even he tried to shake hands with Mimi Hijab Mimi Hijab refused right this is what they do with you because you are so kind those people they understand your kindness as weakness they take advantage of it it's a weak spot on you you are kind they knew they cannot do that with me I am kind with the kind the second you get to the second stage I will make you shish kebab immediately before even you, you if even if you, before you, you plink so when you deal with them you need to be ready to bend in the person if the person is nice you know okay be nice with him why not we will be nice with everybody we love everybody we love the Muslims but if a person come into us and he is riding the horse of the devil we will show him that his horse will not function with us actually if you watch the debate of uh, David David he, he got the guy busted easy actually but because they make a mockery people the Muslim they thought by laughing because this guy was a joker he won as an example David he said to him he quote for him in Sahih Bukhari it says your God have uh, scholars they say you have part <laughs> uh, uh, Mimi he said <laughs> which is scholars who said though <laughs> you know and that's it it's over with those people you have to be consistent in hitting the head don't let it go you say to you who is the scholar you get him busted your prophet said you idiot don't let it go because they try to make a real debate a macaroni all right and don't worry about people making videos about me why you go watch them they are really upset i'm driving the devil crazy good for us the more we make videos about me that's mean the more i am successful it's not the opposite do you see me upset i'm not each one of those who make videos about me it's for our victory this uh, susu sabil he made a victory we made him shish kebab and he will never dare to debate me so don't worry about this those things don't, don't even think about it this leave it leave those things for me we are victorious my friend and they are desperate they don't know what to do you lose your ground when you go down to their level and you speak stupid they are bankrupt that's why nobody call me nobody dare to call me nobody dare to debate me 
We will debate you. We are willing to travel to the end of the world. If my friend, you do not need to travel anywhere. Be a man and call me. I will, I will call you. They will not. Work. So they just, they are just, this is their level. So we will not waste our time with those little kids. Those kids, they help us in certain stage. And now they are burned. That's it. They are not for use. That's it. What we can do. If they will not debate me, there's no need to waste your time to keep talking about them. So please, when you come here, don't talk about them. The reason, the reason I'm of mission like Mimi Hijab because I'm showing you how they try to make a mockery of you as a method of intimidation. Not answering. They never answer. They never answer a question. They try to intimidate you. If you go in the Middle East, if I am a person living in the Middle East, do you think I can talk? No, because they will intimidate me and even they will kill me. I will not survive five minutes if I ask any question, if I say two words there. All of us renew that. So the only way for them to uh, make a point is to suppress and oppress. And if you live in the West and you cannot do that, they try to make a stress on you, like make too many videos, insult you, try to make fun of you, try to call you, make fun. It's just to make you stressed. Don't do that. Don't worry. Laugh. Trust me, they are the one who don't do sleep. For me, I finish. I, uh, I, you know, I start reading something or watching sometime like YouTube, like hiking, camping, whatever. I like to watch the stuff. So I relax. They are the one who go and they, they, they dream about me. I don't really. You will be a bodyguard. I, I do not need a bodyguard. Why do I need a bodyguard? I'm the last one who need a bodyguard. You see, you need a bodyguard if you are afraid. I am not. I never been afraid and I will never be afraid. And death mean nothing to me. Literally mean nothing. Actually, not long time ago in front of you, I said, I pray to the Lord that I will not live long. Did I say that? I mean, I don't care for life. I care for doing what I should do to help people. But living long, living short is the last of my worry. Right? Those who they are attached too much to, to, to this earth, they lose earth fast, actually. I, this is what I notice. People who they are afraid of death, they die. Honestly, those who they are afraid of death, uh, they die. I went through war, I went through hell of stuff. People who you never imagine, I never thought they would die, they are dead. And I am the one who everybody thought I would be dead because I jump wherever there is risk. And I am the last one, I'm alive, and they are dead. <clears throat> you see, the second you live in fear, you are not alive anywhere anyway because your fear will kill you don't let fear take over you understand life as this first I'm a Christian I'm a believer and it doesn't matter what happened to me I am alive I am victorious so I live I don't live I'm alive this is number one number two I prefer to live as a man who is brave to say what he believed from being a coward who die like many who never say the word to, to express even what they believe. I believe to die as a person who changed the life of many better than being just an additional, like additional grave in this ground. How many graves there is? There is millions, billions, numbers. The Lord, he said, you shall know them from their fruits. And this is the only thing I care for. I have my sin. All of us, we are sinners. But at least I will bring good fruit with me. At least. Right? So then don't live, even if you don't, this is not, not only about Islam, anything, anything. You see, the second you be, became afraid, you don't enjoy life. Like today, you are afraid from Corona. 
you, 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 you are you are terrified then that's it you are dead you are dead even without having corona corona killed you already you are scared to go you're scared to sleep you're scared to touch anything you're scared to go anywhere just live just live enjoy what God gave you and if something happened to us let it happen <laughs> so what <laughs> Look around you, my friend. How many people before us they die? Which means you will die. It's just a matter of time. So it is today, next year, next month, 10 years from now. Well, it's the same. Time go fast and you will die. Just live. Live and be happy. It doesn't matter what is going on. Never live in fear and never let fear conquer you. The second you are living in fear, you are dead already. You don't enjoy anything. Right? Like, do you notice like somebody have a phobia as an example from, he need to, to wash the pillow every day. He need to have a new sheet every day. He need to, etc. He need to wipe his hand if he touch somebody. I mean, what kind of life this life is? And not only that, those people, they have way less immune system from us. If you are a child, and your parents, they never let you walk with naked feet and play with the dirt. Then if one they touch the dirt, you get, dirt, you, you get sick, seriously sick. Because they did not prepare your body to deal with the, with the things around us. They are, they, there is germs around us. We live with germs. Our mouth is full of germs. So the second you are living in a phobia of fear, you are a victim of germs. You are dead already. You know, you know, you remember Muhammad, he said, I was victorious by terror. You remember? No sort of a rock. How he was victorious, not by an army who really can conquer, but by an army which is killing people. The second you became coward, scared, a cockroach can destroy you. You will see a woman, she is six foot tall, she see a cockroach in the kitchen, she jump in the top of the table and she scream to her husband. What happened? It's a cockroach. <laughs> Correct? It's just a cock it's just a stupid cockroach. Jumping and screaming for what? It's not an alligator. It is a cockroach. And this is the cockroach Muhammad. He scared you. You jump in the top of the chair, he took your house. Do you understand the logic? Very simple. He is saying in front of you, I've been victorious by terror. From a distance of one month journey. Do you see it? So because of his reputation as a filthy animal criminal, people from a distance of one month journey, they run away. Like ISIS. I will give you an example. You know, ISIS is very aggressive and criminals, etc. They surround her a village or let us say a little town in, in Syria. And the guy, there's a person from that town, he told me what happened. They surrounded and they attacked from all directions. Al-Qaeda and ISIS together. Suicide bombing, trucks, etc. They could not get inside this little tiny town, which only Christian live there. Why? Because those Christians, they decide to die before they can let their wives and their women and their daughters raped by those filthy terrorists. More than three months, the attack non-stop. Those people are farmers, villagers, you know, they are not an army. They could not get inside the town. They could not even able to get a foot inside. And they lost hundreds and thousands of their fighters for a very simple reason. They were willing to die to defend their family. The second you became a coward, anyone can take you. Anyone. Doesn't matter who. So you need to learn from that. ISIS are back in Iraq, in Syria. Why not? Actually, you know, if you ask me, 
you see America, USA, they, you know, this, this is what the Muslims, they do in those countries. They ask America to come, please help us. Uh, UK, France, come help us. ISIS took over Iraq and then they go help them. When ISIS are finished, they want them out. Kuffar, infidel, occupation, get out. So if I am a Trump, I will go out and let them deal with their own evil. The problem is that those Western countries are so stupid. They are used always by the Muslims. It doesn't matter what you do to them. They are going to spit at you at the end. Let them have fun. Let the devil fight the devil. What's your business? ISIS will come back. Because ISIS never left. Or what happened? That the Americans, they are so strong for those to be above the ground. The second Trump, he will take his army. The Iraqi, the same mullahs, the same sheikh, they were asking Trump to leave. They would say to him, please, please come back. This is what happened when ISIS almost went to Baghdad. It was the American who stopped them. The American is the one who stopped ISIS in Iraq. The Russian are the one who stopped ISIS in Syria. As simple as that. They use you. And then when they don't need you, they say to you, you are a uh, kafir, Allahu Akbar. You are occupation, get out. What are you doing in my country? Why are you are in Iraq? Now, if a Trump, he take all his army, trust me, in a few months, ISIS will start taking over and they will kiss his shoes to send his army back. So it depends on how stupid he is. If he is really stupid, he will send them back. Actually, they should let ISIS do their job why because isis is the biggest and easiest way to destroy islam let muslims see the truth about islam this is this is islam isis is islam this is why after isis is not the same as before a lot of kurdish in iraq and in syria they became christians because people they saw how filthy this cult is muslims now in iraq they are not living as muslims this is islam by name ISIS came is a true Islam. That is a true Islam. We will break your legs if you wear a jeans. They have fatwa that if a woman, she sit in the chair, she committed adultery. Why? Because the chair is a meal. The chair is what? Is meal. In Arabic, kursi. You know? So women, she is not allowed to sit in a chair because the chair is a meal. I mean, look, look at the madness. Haram! You can't sit in the chair. It's a meal. You sit in a man? A man, he wear a jeans. They broke his legs. For wearing what? A jeans. So, those are the ones who will make people leave Islam. Because what we have today, that Muslims watching British dancers, uh, uh, wearing jeans, uh, having TV and satellite, and etc. And you know, but this is not Islam. The real Islam come, Muslim leave. Did you ask yourself why Muslim don't want ISIS in Egypt? If if, the, if ISIS is the real Islam, why did they want it? Why Muslim don't even want the Muslim Brotherhood? Muslim Brotherhood is way 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 nicer than ISIS. They are criminals too, but they are better than ISIS as 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 less aggressive. Still, the Muslims in Egypt they reject them and they kick them out of the country. So why the Muslim don't want Islam? but yet they are Muslims but they don't want Islam or reality they want their own version of Islam where we can watch TV we can go to night club well a woman she can wear a skirt uh, uh, you know she can show her hands and her face uh, she can uh, you know buy uh, put perfume and get out it's always is forbidden uh, listening to music going to the beach but you cannot do that in Islam But this is the only Islam they want. This is why you will see that when Islam trying to rule a country, Muslim themselves, they don't want it. Who is stopping the Moroccan to have Sharia law in Morocco? You tell me. Sharia law in Algeria, in Libya, in Syria, in Jordan. The king of Jordan, he claimed that he is from the family of Muhammad. 
So why the king of Jordan don't have Sharia law? Because they don't want it. I mean, as simple as that. You do not need to be genius, right? Do you understand? Look, the website we are reading from, this website, is owned by the king of Jordan. Look what it says. The Royal of Ahlul Bayt Institute, Islamic Thought Amman. So this guy, he claimed that he is from the family of Muhammad. Okay, Mr. Muhammad boy, you are a king of your country. And you are the one who decide what this country will go with. Why you don't have Sharia law? Right? Why you don't want it? Oh, there's no screen, sorry. They don't want it. Actually, the second you, you grow a beard in those Islamic countries, they watch you. They watch you, they spy at your phone, they spy at your uh, 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 email, they spy at your computer, they put a card in front of your eyes to see who is, who is but the second you grow a beard. You can ask any Muslim. Islamic government, the first thing the Islam, in Islamic countries, the first thing they watch is they watch the one who grow beard. What is their worry? Because this is what danger comes from. So most of them they are aware that Islam is dangerous. They don't want Islam. They want just a different different kind of Islam. Islam they, they want they, they 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 create a new modern from new galaxy Islam. Like now we have the month of Ramadan coming, right? <clears throat> Many of you will think that the month of Ramadan, the Muslim will start praying. In the month of Ramadan, this is the month of belly dancing. Ask anyone who watch Arabic, Arabic TV. You will die laughing. The whole month is belly dancing. Quran belly dancing. Belly dancing Quran. Like you will find, like, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, the, 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 the TV, you play Quran. 10 minutes, 20 minutes after. Movie full of belly dancing. Quran belly dancing. This is what Islam is about. But if you post in YouTube or in Facebook in Egypt and you say Muhammad is a false prophet, they will torture you. Actually, I saw in the news. <clears throat> That in Egypt they arrested the girl because she said she told the girls to open an account in app and if they can if they strip they will they can make money. Suddenly the whole country is all over this girl. The whole country she became the prostitute of the country. I mean, the, Egypt is a country where in every corner there is a business officially open for prostitution officially. Bars, nightclub, prostitutes, all over the country. Now this girl became the biggest criminal. This is how they are. This is how they are. There's an actor, his name Adil Imam. Those who they are from Egypt from here, I'm sure there's many. They knew what I'm talking about. This guy he always make uh, like uh, let us say acts or movies which is somehow he exposes Islam even though he's an as a Muslim actually his daughter she is married to a Muslim Brotherhood guy so in one of his movies uh, the uh, supposedly there's a judge and the judge asked him about a crime happened in a flat of a Billy dancer and that she is a prostitute. So the judge, he said to him, why you live in a building and this building has a Billy Dancer? Hmm? Why you do that? Why you do that? He said to him, well, if everyone leave a building for having Billy Dancer in the country, the whole country will move out. The whole country will move out. And the Muslim, they can't say anything about him because he's a Muslim. If I say that, I will be dead. You know what I mean? <laughs> this is the truth.
He's a comedy movie, but in his comedy, he throw what you nobody can throw. He made he made a movie is about divorce in Islam, where a man if he divorce his wife I forget the name of the movie. He, if you if a man divorce his wife he have to hire somebody to sleep with his wife or to marry her for one night as Muhammad. You remember when he said Muhammad said uh, you have to taste his juice and he tastes your juice. You remember? This is exactly what Muhammad uh, what uh, this uh, movie is about. So. Uh, he is an employee in a, in a company and he's like a naive person each one of those businessmen he divorces his wife they need a person who will not sleep with their wife but he will marry her because this is Islam he divorced her three times she can't get back to him unless she sleep with the new guy so they call this guy supposedly he is the naive guy and they ask him to marry their wife for one night and supposedly he will not sleep with her but according to Islam he have to sleep with them so this guy who is supposed to be naive, he married the wife of the boss and then he sleep with her and then the second boss, the third boss, etc. This is what the whole movie is about. <laughs> and because it's Islam, it's a Muslim, nobody can, you know, nobody can complain. I mean, it's a, it's a funny, people love him, but the truth hurt. He is exposing the garbage of Muhammad. You know, we don't want just uh, kids here. Yeah, anyway, I mean, all of them, they knew what Islam is about. Look, if you watch any Arabic movies, you see women in a short skirt, women in the bikini, women, etc. You know, but it's Islamic country. And now uh, people want to pray. If you go preach the gospel in the street, they will kill you. But women wearing short skirts, she's welcome. If I type in the screen, you know, I don't want to go there, actually, you know, I don't want to change the topic now. But I mean, they are always, always in that level. Right? Yeah, all of those are uh, Arabic uh, comedy movies. You know? And now Ramadan is the movie, is a, is a, the season for those uh, movies. Link for what? For this, just uh, type this. Uh, Adil Imam. Let me pause it for you. Here we go in English. Adil Imam movies. Huh. Just search for this. You know Adil Imam movies in English. And you will find all the names. I, I don't know the name about the. The, the one who marry the wives of the boss. Maybe somebody uh, Egyptian here can help us. I think we have some Egyptian here, Christian Egyptian. I forgot really what the name of the movie. Yeah, I cannot remember really what what, uh, what the name of the movie. Yeah. Um, we need uh, we need somebody who's who is an Egyptian. He will know for sure. Um. <clears throat> See, I'm, I'm trying to read all the names of the movies. But anyway, if there is no subtitle, I won't understand it. <clears throat> yeah, I can't remember the name. Anyway. Um... I hope today we did learn something good, you know, about this when the Muslim they claim that the Quran is preserved and this garbage. Obviously, there's no Quran. There's no Quran. There's no preservation. And even the one they recite the Quran from, we showed you before in previous videos, that he himself is accused to be a fraud. Rejected by Muslims even to mention a hadith. 
However, for me, I don't really focus on the Quran being Quran preserved. For me, better than Quran is not preserved. And I will tell you why. If I show a Muslim now something in the Quran is stupid. If all of them believe the Quran is preserved, then they cannot say, oh, this is somebody play with it. This is why it's mistaken, right? But if they believe that the Quran is preserved, and we show them a scientific error, a history error, all kinds of errors, then they have no reason to say this is a human error. You know what I'm saying? Do you, do you understand me? As long as they say this is a Quran preserved. So if, the, if there is an error, that means this is a preserved error. That's mean Allah himself is the one who made the error, not a human being. You see, I can say, okay, here uh, I'm writing a book. Um, we used to write it by pen in the old days, right? And a human being can make a mistake. It's possible. Human error. Like write the word mistakenly. And then the one who, not, uh, uh, I write the word and my word is not clear. And then the one after me, he want to copy him from my book. He write it, but he wrote it wrongly because my word wasn't clear. Like he got it wrong. It, it's possible. But if this book is totally preserved, then they have no excuse to say, oh, this error is not from Allah. No problem. It's not worth it. I made a video about coronavirus for Dr. Sabir. It's not going to be this. It's going to be the same garbage. The same garbage. Don't you watch my video about uh, Islam hygiene and Corona for Dr. Sabil, Sabil Ahmad? Go watch it. It's the same. We got them busted. Right? But the Shia say the Quran has been corrupted. See, the Shia are very sneaky people. The Shia between each other they say the Quran is corrupted but when they speak, speak in public mostly they say no the Shia they believe that the true Quran is uh, uh, is the Quran of Fatima Fatima suppose she have her own Quran and Fatima she gave the Quran or her Quran to Al-Mahdi and Al-Mahdi he will come back one day and he will have the true Quran with him all right Yeah, well, that video, uh, the, they mentioned hygiene, how to protect yourself from Corona. Actually, I think this website, they have, uh, they have uh, about this Corona thing. Yeah, I think I saw it. It's a funny website. This is all for, for Zakir Naik. This website is for Zakir Naik. Islamic Beecher. <laughs> Preacher. Zakir Naik now he have 2.9 million like in Facebook. Is it principle to watch be dancing? My friend, I live in the Middle East. I grew up in the Middle East. And in the Middle East, everything is possible as long as you don't talk about it. Just don't talk about it. What do you think of Omada Al Ahkam Volume Three? I don't know what is that. You have to give me the Hadith because numbers mean nothing. Even Muslims, they have different numbers. Numbers remind me of nothing. All right. So anyway, I think our point is clear. That when they say that Quran is preserved, we you know we love. Ahmed al Sura, why he wanna show you your face, his face? Get out of here. No place for kids. Anyone he is silly guys, just let me know and I will get him out. Don't waste your time. Don't even waste your time talking to him. Show him your face. Why you wanna see the guy face? Stupidity. I mean, don't do, don't go down to the level of those people.
<clears throat> uh, well, I'm not sure what uh, what is that uh, right. I think you are quoting it wrong, my friend. I think the quotation is wrong. Sometimes people when they translate something, you know, even like the same hadith I know in Arabic, when I read in English, the translation make me confused about it. I mean, it, it looks sound to, totally different. All right. I need to find first what is the book in Arabic. And then I can find out what is exactly the origin of it. Anyway, um, qalam. What do you mean by the qalam? Because qalam can mean many things. As an example, you know, it can be penalty, it can be punishment, it can be a pen. What do you mean? As an example, you can say when you speak about the word qalam, uh, you can speak about punishment of somebody doing something wrong. Uh, if he is an adult or he is mature or he is too young. So, you need to tell me what do you mean. <clears throat> Always, you see Arabic Arabic language, it can be very confusing. And the same word mean many things. Uh, however, uh, in Islam there is many rules, and the rules is different between sects, which means the same rule have different the same let's say the same crime have many rules depend in the sect you belong to. As an example, some Islamic sect, there is no punishment if you sleep, if you or you marry uh, a woman, you know that she is your mother, or a, a, a woman you know she is your daughter, or you marry uh, someone he she is forbidden for you, generally speaking, you know. Yeah. And if we go to the hadith. You will see the following. Let me find this hadith about Al Qalam. As an example, this one. It says here, Rufi al Qalam an Thalatha. It is not uh, which means the law, the practice, the sharia, uh, or let us say the penalty, the punishment is is not. Uh, there's no qalam on them, which means there's no practice of what is written by the pen or the by the law on those. Uh, someone he is crazy, someone he is a child, uh, until he grow, uh, grow up, and somebody he is insane. You know, this is what qalam here mean. So it depends what you mean by qalam. Qalam can be a pen. And qalam is not an Arabic word, by the way. It's not an Arabic word. What is Jannah mean? Well, Jannah supposedly is something hiding. Like in Muslim, they say genie. Genie. Why he is genie? Because supposedly he is invisible. So uh, in Arabic, we say for, for the embryo, we say Janine. The child inside his mother is Janine. Why? Because we can't see him. So Jannah is coming from there. It is, it is something is hiding we cannot see. Sure, you can translate any of my any of my videos to any language you want, Mr. Z San. Feel free to download my videos and put them anywhere you want, in any language. Sure, sure, you can translate to Urdu, 
and this goes for anyone anyone who translates for the free my, my my videos are for free for everybody you can put them in your channel you can add subtitles just be honest in what we say don't don't fabricate things we did not say right yeah قلم, you know uh, what is the word قلم? some they say the origin of it is in Aramaic some they say it is maybe Persian you know um, we don't know what is the origin but it's obviously is not an uh, not an Arabic word right like you know in those uh, scenario like I wish there is a there's a person I know but I don't know how to contact him anymore. This guy is a is a genius when it's come to the language, especially the Syriac. He speaks many ancient language. One of them is the ancient Aramaic. This guy, if we can get him here with us, I will look like a fool next to him when it's come to the language. As simple as that. He's like a he's a walking library when it's come to the language. This what he. I mean, this is his specialty. I think, uh, I think he have many PhD, and um, I lost his. I lost his contact. But this guy, he do not know anything except languages. You know, just languages. So if you want to know like an origin of a word, he can he can bring you uh, uh, a deep understanding of the word of the language. What do we say to those Muslim who say classic Arabic is different from modern Arabic and that even Arab now don't know how to read Quran because it is a classic Arabic? Well, you see, the problem in the Quran is not because it's a classic Arabic, but the Quran is using words Muhammad himself do not know what they mean. And Muhammad, not only he stole words from others, they do not know what they mean, as an example. I will show you a hadith here. Let me see if I can find the hadith. Muhammad sometime he come with words nobody heard before you know he's mentally ill and he he say those words he create them in order uh, to make himself like he is coming with something new you know what I mean uh, let us see I'm trying to find the hate in English if I can. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like the search engine here is not really good. It shows you anything connected with the word you are looking for, but not what you are looking for. Let us see. <clears throat> All right. Look at this one. Let us see. I hope this one we will find it now. Ah, here we go. Muhammad is speaking about, like you know, if you wanna, uh, if you wanna have sex with your wife, you have to say a certain prayer. If you don't do it, the Satan or the genie. He will be having sex with your wife during the time you are having sex. He arrive himself around your private part. So each time you have intercourse, he, the devil, is having intercourse too. So Muhammad, he said to them, 
that those are the, he called them al mugharribun and they said to him what is mugharribun what is that what do you mean al mugharribun you see the you see the word and remember those are arab the one is asking they are arab what is mugharribun he said those who the genie or the devil he take partner with them which means he is having sex with the women so it's obvious that muhammad he he say things he he fabricate names uh, uh, like the word maghrib is the one who face the the west so muhammad saying the one who bent down in the wrong direction those are the gay this is why the muslim believe that gays and lesbian they are the children's of the the one who have sex with his wife without praying to Allah before intercourse. You understand? So Muhammad always come with a new ideas using his own terms and his own words, uh, just to add some let us say spice to him as a prophet. Like he he just taught us something new today. You know. This is new. What is Mughribun? We did not hear this before, you know. We knew what the word mean different. We, you know, like if you are going in the direction of the West, but how people they can? What, what do you mean by them? Who are those people? Right. Um, <clears throat> Actually, there's some some websites. If I can show you the hadith, he would die laughing. As an example, this one, and this is the one. If you don't do, this is the prayer. Uh, you have to say, otherwise, Shaitan will have sex with your wife, and then your son will be a gay, according to Muhammad. You see, this is the prayer a Muslim you have to say in order to preserve his wife private part from joined by the devil and have sex with her, and then the children's will be the children of the devil, and they will be gay and lesbian, according to Muhammad. So like you are a Muslim now, your wife in the bed waiting for you to take off her panty. Now it's time for you to make a prayer. Otherwise, shaitan, he will go around your penis and he will be doing boom, boom to your wife. Have fun. And then your wife, she get a child and this child will be a gay. Welcome to Islam. There's a prayer before you, before you go to the bathroom. There's a prayer when you want to have sex. And all those prayers are about a genie. The genie, if you go in the bathroom and you don't say the prayer, shaitan will go inside your anus and he will block it. There's there's a video, I don't know if you remember, guys. Anyone remember the video I made I made it before? Uh, let me see if I can find it. There's a sheikh in the mosque he was teaching. Uh, what shaitan he do to you when you enter the bathroom and you don't say the prayer let me see <clears throat> the problem we cannot keep those videos if you play them in our channel I don't keep them anyway I mean but they are funny they are hilarious. <clears throat> but let's share something with you. Of my face, this is Sahih Hadith of Muslim. Imagine, you know, when you do your wudu, feel good about it. Alhamdulillah, the sins have been washed. You know, you might get what's was at that time, injection again. What's the injection now? The injection is, is you just did a sin. You want to go and do wudu right now, you hypocrite? You hypocrite? <laughs> Say to him, Mr. Shaitan, Jazakumullah khair. Mr. Shaitan. Yeah, rejection. Mr. Shaitan. I'm going to do it because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said what? He said, Atbi'u as sayyi'at al hasanata tamhuha. Look at the stupidity. Do something good after the bad, the bad, the good one will delete the bad one. So what the Muslim they do, they go and kill somebody and they make some donation.
The moment you do a bad deed, straight away follow it with a good deed. See? Allah will wipe it away. That's it. Allah will wipe your bad deed away. That's the moment it. you're doing a bad deed, like so, you know, some brothers they sin and they feel bad about it and they go down and then they think, oh my God, oh no, Allah, why have I done this? They tear themselves apart. You know, if you've done a sin, the best thing is to do what? You say, okay, I've sinned. Shaitan got me. You got me once? Hey, I'm going to get you three times now, bro. I'm going to eat three times. I'm going to go do my wudu. I'm going to go and do my rakats. I'm going to do... Supposedly, this is the ethic. You know, that is teaching ethic. You know, this is the ethic Muslim. But let us see what, what will happen to you when you go to the bathroom. Hold on. We don't want to play the whole thing. You can search for the video. Make, uh, make shaitan fart. Make shaitan fart. All right? Let us see. Where it says... But the hadith says lahu durat. You know what durat is? Durat is. He runs and as he's running, yeah, his fart comes out. Lahu durat. I'm not making this a hadith. So you, that shaitan made me do sin. Ah. See, he's saying them they are laughing. Don't laugh. This is hadith. Shaitan he fart. You say Allah, shaitan fart. Get up. Yeah, just get up. Just give the adhan. Right? That shaitan, you're going to make him, you're going to make him leak some serious gas. Serious gas. <laughs> serious gas. He won't be coming near you for some time. Now, don't feel bad about, you know, you're human being end of the day. Serious brothers, sisters. You know, you're human being end of the day. If he knocked you down once, you knock him down three times. And listen to the ahadith, like you first, you know what the deen is about. The deen is about getting the shaitan away from you. So, you know, you go into the toilet, you know, Bismillah, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al khu See, you go to the toilet now, there's a prayer you have to say. The same prayer before you do boom, boom. Huh? Because if you don't do it, look what will happen to you inside the bathroom. Listen carefully. So Allah protect me from these devils. You, you go in there with your left foot. The left foot you went in, you get a reward for that. The dua you said, shaitan. Left foot, remember. Left foot. If you go with the right foot, shaitan will put his fingers and he will go inside your anus. Be careful. Left foot and you say the prayer before left foot. Not right foot. Never go inside the bathroom with the right foot. Danger. Be careful. I'm warning you. I'm just okay. I, I give my I give my warning. It's up to you. Do it as you wish. Okay. Tell us, a brother. Tell us. What's, that's wise. Wise. What you can do. You get a reward for that. The dua you said, Shaitan will not see you. You're in the toilet. Shaitan can't see you anymore. That's in a hadith, right? If you don't say the dua, if you don't say the dua, what happens is the Shaitan not only comes inside, but the hadith of Tirmidhi says he plays with your bowels. <laughs> Shaitan go inside. You know what inside? You know what he's talking about, right? Shaitan, he go inside. Inside where? Inside your anus. Shaitan go inside your butt. This is in the mosque. And this guy is very serious. This is, this is what their prophet said to them. This is not a joke for them. This is serious. They take it very serious, you know? Shaitan not only comes inside, but the hadith of Tirmidhi says he plays with your bowels. <laughs> he plays with the bowels. So you're inside there, you're thinking you're going to be out there in five minutes. He's taking you 20 minutes and you're still not halfway there. <laughs> <laughs> you know why? Because Uncle Shaitan is going, ooh, ooh, la la. <laughs> <laughs> this is religion. This is a prophet of God teaching. What? You know, if I say that to you, and you are not seeing with your eyes, you might say this guy is making things up, correct? Honestly, I mean, this is hard to believe, but this this, this religion is a garbage. This religion is, a, if I go and say to you, this is what they teach in their mosque, you will say, come on, man, there's no way, that's not true. You know, listen, this is in the mosque, and this is a sheikh, and this is the teaching, and this is their TV, TV. So Allah protect me. 
shaitan. You know what the deen is about? The deen is about getting the shaitan away from you. So you know, you're going to the toilet, you know, Bismillahi Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-khubuthi wal khabais. So Allah protect me from these devils. You, you go in there with your left foot. The left foot you went in, you get a reward for that. The dua you said, shaitan will not see you. You're in the toilet, shaitan can't see you anymore. That's in a hadith, right? If you don't say the dua, if you don't say the dua, what happens is the shaitan not only comes inside, but the hadith of Tidmidi says he plays with your bowels. He plays with the bowels. So you're inside there, you're thinking you're going to be out there in five minutes. He's taking you 20 minutes and you're still not halfway there. You know why? Because the shaitan is going, ooh, ooh, la la. See, the hadith told us, the hadith says to us, he plays with your bowels. Yalla abu, yalla abu, he plays with the bowels. So you say the dua, Allah protects you. Right? You come out of the toilet, ghufranak, Allah forgive me, you get reward for that. <laughs> you come from the toilet, you say, forgive me, Allah. <laughs> and look at the music in the background, it's like a horror movie. <laughs> now, come on, shouldn't you convert to Islam after this? You must be kidding me if you, if you avoid converting. Don't don't wait. It's it's going to be too late for you. I mean, obviously, Muhammad is a prophet. Actually, I remember once I played this video in a church. You know, uh, people literally they fell in the ground, especially with my comment because I was standing in the stage. You know, it's a big like I mean, it's a, not just a church. I mean, it's like a stadium. You know, big big big. Uh, but it's a church anyway. So. People, they were fair in the chairs. They cannot handle themselves. They cannot, they cannot hold themselves. There's people they cannot breathe from laughing hard. You know, it's hot area. The condition is not taking too many people. Oh, God, what is this? God, this is, are you serious? You know, yeah, this is serious. And especially with my, my comment, my comment make it even more, you know me, you know. So I am in the stage, stop. And I make my comment and people die laughing, you know. <laughs> But if you don't show them, they will not believe. You know what I mean? If you tell them this is what they believe, doesn't make any like, like okay, you say that. If I say to you, Shaitan, Muslim believe Shaitan go inside your anus, eh, okay. But when you hear it, it's different from them, right? And now you will never forget this, how stupid this religion is. And then they will say to you, we believe in science and miracle of Allah. Yeah. No, what the if? Anyway, anyway. I think we are done for today. Uh, if you want to download the video, download it right away. We, we don't. I don't keep my videos, as you know. And I advise you to subscribe for those who download my videos. So always you can get the one I deleted after I delete them. All right? This is why it's good to download them immediately. Like maybe it take some time. YouTube now is delaying processing videos so it takes time before they can download but maybe an hour or two you can have it done ready you can download and then i will take it down so guys i want to say thank you for being here i hope we did learn something good today uh, god is good you know god he gave us a gift it's called the brain and give us heart uh, uh, to see what is evil to see what is wrong and obviously this religion have nothing nothing right about it they have big mouth but empty brain big mouth but heart is teaching evil violence hatred we as a christian we should always love the muslims don't hate them feel sorry for them this is comedy this is stupid yes but in the same time my heart really cry for those muslims who believe in such a garbage imagine whoever watching there believe in this you know religion can destroy a human being Religion can be the same as drugs sometimes. And this is drugs. This is nothing but drugs. So you, you bring a youth, you teach him that shaitan, if you don't go inside the bathroom now and you say this prayer, shaitan will go inside your anus. This is why you see some many Islamic website, they talk about you should not sleep in your belly. Why? Because shaitan will do boom boom to you. Look like the shaitan, he target every hole for Muslims. Muhammad, he says, shaitan is sleep in your nose, piss in your ears, jump in your side of your mouth, and then now shaitan is inside your anus. Shaitan, if you don't say this prayer, shaitan will be around your penis. Shaitan is all over your sexual parts.
That's Muhammad. Silly. When a, when a man, when a silly man became a teacher and then he claimed to be a prophet, what do you expect? All right. Anyway, guys, I want to say thank you. Uh, I will see you tomorrow. Oh, today is Friday. Ah, tomorrow. Ah, it's already Friday. Hmm. So now tomorrow is a Friday. Okay. We pass the middle of the night and one, what's one a.m. in the morning. So uh, maybe tomorrow we will go live on air in the quality of life. Mm, I'm not sure really. We will see. If you don't subscribe to the quality of life, feel free. This is the account. And actually today we just made a video. I think it's going to be interesting for you. Interesting for you to watch it if you did not watch it yet. Uh, you know, uh, in that account we speak about things benefiting us. I have nothing to do with Islam. We don't speak about such a garbage there. So if you like to watch and join, feel free. And we will see what we will do tomorrow, either here or in the quality of life. Thank you very much for being here. I pray to the Lord that all of you will stay safe in good health and wealth. We pray for the Lord uh, to keep you away from the evil of illness and suffering. Uh, we pray for the Muslim too to be healthy and not to be healthy with the brain, not only with, the, with their body. Because healthy body without a brain is not healthy. Uh, we pray for all of you, your family, your children, all your beloved ones, and even for those who hate us. Pray always that the Lord will bring comfort to our heart, even in the time of sadness, even in the time of stress. Because if you have comfort inside you, even if things is really crazy around you, still you are feeling comfortable. And that is very important. A person who feel comfort, he can live in different standard, even if he is suffering. And the only way to bring comfort to your heart is to appreciate the Lord and to bring him to your life. He will take a lot of weight from your shoulder. Life is very heavy, have a lot of pain, a lot of madness, a lot of evil. Evil is exist, is real. There's bad people, there's, there's good people. So if you let yourself just for the pain on your shoulder alone, you will not be able to carry it alone. It's too heavy. Don't be alone. You have a back, you know, bigger help. Uh, it's good to be a believer, for being a believer will give you a special aid, special help. You see, let us say you are a person who don't want to believe in God. Let us say God does not exist for the sake of argument like an atheist. But the second you believe that you are not alone, you feel different. Correct? And this is exactly what happened to a believer, especially he is a believer, not faking it. You see, if you fool yourself, like I say, I'm going to say I'm not alone, that will not work. Believing in the Lord, that He is with you, that will give you a special comfort. A comfort no medicine can give. No doctor can prescribe for you. Feeling alone is very painful. Very tough. And not all people, they can handle it. And this is why being a believer is a gift for those who believe in that gift and nobody can enjoy it and nobody can use it except those who believe in it so be, be, be a believer my friend and enjoy that gift thank you very much for being here may the lord bless you and see you soon again as a christian prince share all the love with all of you take care bye bye